Hi, Intro to Calculus. Um, I would imagine this is probably the first video for you, so hi, welcome. Um, we're doing, um, we're starting with Chapter 1, Section 1 of um, Calculus, a Single Variable. And the first couple sections are just basic vocab and like some refreshers from Algebra and Pre-Calc. Um, and so I'm going to go through them quickly because it should be review. However, um, if you're really struggling with the review and you don't remember how to do it, let me know in class. Uh, we can spend a little more time practicing it, um, but I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this chapter. So, anyways, uh, yeah, we're going to just go ahead and start. Um, and I'm not going to include all important information um, about the stuff that we're going to cover in chapter one, just again, because it's review, uh, but just to kind of like refresh the memory a little bit. So, uh, functions. What are functions? Um, recall that like a relation is just some sort of a relationship between x and y or two different sets of numbers. Um, but a function is very specific in the fact that you only get one output for every input. Um, and so uh, it has to pass the vertical line test and um, that's kind of, you know, the basics. Okay, also just a refresher, f of x, g of x, h of t are all the way, all different ways that you can denote function of x um, or function of time or function of temperature, you know, whatever your variables may be. Um, and just as a quick refresher, um, like a visual, right, something like this, quadratic or parabola, sorry for the horrible drawing job there, um, that would pass the vertical line test because I can draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph and not hit the graph more than once. Um, however, something like um, that is not a function because for one input, which is, you know, x equals wherever this is, x equals 3 or something, um, there's actually two outputs. So if any place on a function, or if any place on a graph, um, you can draw a vertical line and hit the graph more than once, um, then it is not a function uh, because you have more than one output for each input. Um, okay. Okay, domain and range um, are both, so domain is the set of all input values for a function and the range is all the set of all outputs. Um, so, you know, for domain, you're kind of looking at all of the possible x values that would exist on the function, um, and then your range is all your possible y values. So the way that our book is set up, um, we have a lot of word problems um, and a lot of different types of like real application problems. And sometimes you might have a function that has a domain of negative infinity to infinity as like the actual function itself, algebraically and mathematically. However, depending on the context, um, you might have a more practical domain and range. Um, and so you might only have, uh, so say for example, you were looking at temperature. Um, the range of values of your temperature might be from zero degrees Celsius to like 100 degrees Celsius because that's where the normal temperature ranges go or from, you know, negative, so, negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit to positive 200 degrees Fahrenheit because that's where like the practical values of temperature exist. So even though the function might exist everywhere, you might have to limit it based on the actual context. So you want to be thinking about like what makes sense in the context of the problem as well. Um, it's just something to think about. Linear functions, uh, hopefully you have figured out that linear has the root word line and therefore you know that a linear function is a line. Um, if you don't know that, now you do and congratulations. Okay, so um, <laughs> uh, there's two different ways or at least two different ways, two common ways that we would write, um, algebra algebraically write a linear function. We have slope intercept form and point slope form. Um, so I will write those down for you and explain them. Okay, so another way to think of a linear function is it's a first degree polynomial, which if you don't remember polynomial stuff um, and terminology is that it just means that the highest degree on x is one. 
Um, so your two different forms are y equals mx plus b, that slope intercept, and that's probably the most common. Um, both m and b are constants, right? m is your slope, rise over run, b is your y-intercept, and then point-slope form um, basically is easier if you know the slope and you also know a point rather than the y-intercept. So if, for example, you know that a line goes through the point 1, 5, and you know that the slope is 3, um, it would be easier to use point-slope form just because you can plug in the x values and the slope and then you just have your equation and you're done. Um, and if you wanted to get it in slope-intercept form, then you could just multiply stuff out rather than having to figure out why, where the y-intercept is. Okay? Um, yeah. All right, the difference quotient is probably something new, um, but I would like you to start getting comfortable with what it is and like how to use it. Um, because once we get into derivatives uh, and um, limits, you'll be using this a lot. Um, but right now it's just like in terms of rearranging and like looking at functions. Um, but the difference quotient um, is the following, okay? For any function f of x, Okay, this is for any function. The difference quotient is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, now h and x are variables. So kind of what that looks like is you're rearranging, you're, you're plugging x plus h into the function, and then you're rearranging and like working stuff out. So I'm going to write that down nicer for you and show you an example of what that, what that would look like. Okay, so there it is nice and neat for you. Uh, difference quotient is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Um, so let's do a quick example of that. Um, so I just made this one up. Uh, it's not actually on the paper, but let's pretend that f of x is 3x squared minus 5x plus 4. The question is, just find the difference quotient and then simplify it, okay? So um, if you'd like, highly recommend, pause it, see if you can figure it out, and then um, check your answer with, with the following solution. Okay, so step one should be writing the difference quotient, which is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Um, and that's, you know, f of x plus h is literally just plugging x plus h in for x's here, okay? So you have three, so this first little bit here, that's the f of x plus h, so three times x plus h squared minus five times x plus h plus four, and then minus f of x, and f of x is this three x squared minus five x plus four, and divided by h, okay? So then you wanna simplify. So this you have to FOIL, that's not x squared plus h squared, do not do that, FOIL that out, FOIL that out, okay? And then simplify. So, as I multiply the x plus h squared out, I get x squared plus 2x plus 8, or 2xh plus h squared, uh, and then that's times 3. And then I subtract um, 5x plus h, which is this piece here. And um, what you see is a lot of stuff starts to cancel, the minus 5x and the plus 5x. Make sure you're keeping track of your minus signs. Um, negative 4 and the positive 4 cancel. So, uh, when I distribute the 3 and cancel, I have 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 5h minus 3x squared over h. Now, the um, the 3x squared and the minus 3x squared, those will cancel. So now I'm only left with stuff with h in it, okay? So I can actually pull an h out. So it would be h times 6x plus 3h minus 5, okay, um, and then divided by h, and since I have multiplication and division, those cancel, and so the entire thing simplifies to 6x plus 3h minus 5. So that would be your final difference quotient, simplified, okay? Cool. All right, hopefully slope and y-intercept are self-explanatory. We've already should cover that. So like on a linear function, you have a constant slope, um, that is your rise over run, uh, and your y-intercept is where the function or the graph intersects the y-axis. Um, eventually, we're going to get to a point where we're talking about slopes on functions other than lines, um, and 
a slope on a line is constant, right? Because you're going up the same amount every time. But if you have a function that's like this, right, the, the rate at which you're changing is changing. So you have a, a steeper slope on certain parts of the graph than other parts, okay? It's just like when you're skiing, you go faster in certain areas than you go in other areas because the slope changes. Um, so anyways, generally speaking, it's the rate of change. Um, and the y-intercept is where the function intersects the y-axis, which on this graph is right here, y-intercept. And on this graph, it's right here, y-intercept. Ah. Okay, cool. Okay, um, so the next, oh, also the y-intercept is, you can also find it when x is set equal to zero. So if you have like an equation, um, you could set the x is equal to zero and solve for y and that would also get you your y-intercept because the y-axis is when x equals zero. Um, so then the next things that we have are increasing functions and decreasing functions. Um, so an increasing function is a function that increases as x gets larger and a decreasing function is a function that decreases as x gets larger. So like when you're reading left to right, does the graph go up or does it go down? And if it goes up, it's increasing. If it goes down, it's decreasing. Long story short. Okay, the last thing is um, proportionality. So we say that y is proportional to x if you can write the relationship as y equals some constant times x. Um, and we say that y and x are inversely proportional if y equals some constant times 1 over x. So that's what that looks like, right? So k is a constant. So if y equals like 3 times x, then y is proportional to x. But if y equals 3 times 1 over x, um, then we'd say that y is inversely proportional to x because they're like on opposite sides. Um, and basically, right, as x increases, y would decrease. And over here, as x increases, y also increases. Okay, so now we just have just a couple different simple examples. Um, we'll do a lot more of this in class. Um, but uh, go ahead and try one and two, and then uh, I will go over them shortly. But you should try them first to make sure you got it. Okay, so the first two, we have um, p equals f of t, where the population is p in millions. And it's a function of time, so um, the number of years since 1970. So when time is zero, that is the year 1970. So the meaning of f of 35 equals 12 basically means that when t is 35, or 35 years after 1970, which is also 2005, the population of the city was 12 million. So t is 35, population is 12 in millions, and that's what that interpretation would be. Um, and you would want to like say it in layman's terms, like if you were explaining it to somebody who didn't speak any math, you could say, oh, in 2005, the population of the city was 12 million. Like that's the easiest way to say that that would make sense to anybody. Um, and then the second one, um, I started with point slope form, but I had to find slope first, which is rise over run, 4 minus 7 over 3 minus 2, or 7 minus 4 over 2 minus 3. Keep those in order, uh, but you end up with negative 3 either way. So point slope form, you could either of those would be correct, um, and then you could just multiply those out and rearrange it to get slope intercept form, which is uh, y equals negative three x plus thirteen. Um, and then we just have a couple more examples here. So go ahead, try those, find the domain and range, um, and then see if you can do number four as well. Okay, so here are your answers. Domain for a um, is about from one to forty, or if you assume that it keeps going, then it would be negative infinity to positive infinity, depending on what you assumed about the function. Um, and I figured the range was about from 1 to like 4.5. Maybe you guessed that was about 5. That's fine. Um, then your range would be 1 to 5. B, the domain is 1 to infinity. Range is 0 to infinity. And then um, for the, the rabbit one, you want to think about... Um, time is going to go from today on, so 0 to infinity. 
the range is the number of rabbits, so that might have a limiting point, right? We might be only able to fit a thousand rabbits on campus or something like that, so that's kind of questionable. And last, to make it simpler, um, just do the velocity and time. Okay. Good.